Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday. Here's the Atlantic, and uh, you can see what's happening now. Notice the reduction in rainfall that's occurred over the Antilles that they've been dealing with such, for such a long time. The jet stream's still here, uh, but it is weakening, and the convective activity is being suppressed in favor of increasing convective activity over here in the Eastern Pacific and the Western Caribbean, which we've been talking about due to this MJO pulse that has been marching steadily across the Pacific. And now you can see the monsoonal circulation getting all fired up here. You can't can't see her yet, but a uh, tropical storm Aletta is over here to the west, uh, the first development of the eastern Pacific season, and there's another monsoonal low that you can see here, and uh, lots of moisture is streaming up. And you can see that there's this old frontal boundary that's sitting here off the southeast U.S. coast extending down towards the Yucatan, and uh, this is the kind of setup that we talk about nearly every year in the early season, where these old frontal boundaries get stuck down here, and things can start festering uh, down near their tails in the Caribbean here, and we may see some low pressure start to develop down there during the next several days as it interacts with moisture from the monsoonal circulation in the Pacific. But what may happen before that is that we may have to watch for some kind of hybrid or subtropical low pressure system to develop off of the Carolinas uh, due to this old surface trough that is sitting here interacting with this cutoff upper low that is now uh, moving across the south. You can kind of see it here over Texas that will be moving across and stalling out. You can see it better on the water vapor imagery here. Here's the upper low coming across. This will be moving and getting cut off from the westerlies. This is what we call a trough split where the tail end of the trough gets cut off into a closed low that gets stalled out beneath a ridge that will be developing over southeast Canada and New England and uh, this is something that can occur where you have to watch for surface lows developing underneath of the upper low off of the southeast US coast and if it gets stacked up it could develop warm core characteristics and uh, at least bring a lot of wetness to the southeast probably not a particularly significant system but it is something interesting that we're going to have to watch you can see tropical storm Aletta down here in the eastern Pacific along with this other monsoonal low that may try to be Come bud, I believe that's their second name over the coming days, and you can see overall the increase in convective activity that is occurring in this area of the world and uh, is helping to set up all of this moisture that's getting streamed up here, interacting with this frontal boundary that is going to be causing all of these problems. Now this is the GFS precipitation accumulation over the next eight days. You can see the main areas that we're watching. It shows the Northwest Caribbean getting very wet here and also a lot of wetness showing up off the Southeast US coast and in the Bahamas and Florida and the Carolinas. This is due to this old surface trough sitting here interacting with the upper low coming across. This is the UK Met's depiction of it. You can see the big ridge over here over the Eastern Hudson Bay and then look at uh, this upper low that's getting stuck down here. A rather broad but it's been cut off and you can clearly see that as this ridge marches eastward it's going to take a few days to get this upper low cleaned out of here and uh, this is a trough split that will be hanging around for a few days and could cause problems. You can see underneath of it there's a nice little tight low, pretty weak but it's still a, a nice little feature showing up here on the model starting to develop underneath of the upper low with the surface ridge showing up to the north blocking it here and trying to bring it back in towards the coast and uh, this is something we're going to have to watch. This is the Europeans depiction of it and uh, notice it has a little bit of a weak surface low showing up out here but notice that the, it keeps the upper low back here inland over Tennessee and Georgia and uh, this is a problem for development because it doesn't allow the surface low to enter the low shear environment and become stacked with the upper low and start to uh, functioning off of warm core processes as well as baroclinic ones. This particular setup is more baroclinic than anything else and it still has the jet stream moving over it which would shear convection off and not allow it to get as strong as it would as if this upper low came to meet it halfway near the coast here and stacked up with it would be a much better situation for development. This is the GFS 200 millibar look and uh, you can see the trough also hanging back here inland not really getting towards the coast here and at the surface there's not much going on. There's this uh, very weak trough in here which is in a weird position to begin with. The GFS should probably be sticking it over here or closer to the coast but not in between uh, but in general you can see very weak feature uh, as the upper trough stays inland. Now it's interesting, you can see that there's also the activity firing down here in the Western Caribbean as it starts to generate a festering low pressure area, but uh, the GFS has been overdone on the convective intensity in the Western Caribbean in its forecast over the last few days, and it's being 
kicked in the tail by the European models on the MJO forecast, and it would be interesting to see if the GFS is still overdone here, which would affect the position of uh, this upper trough, because if you have too much convective activity down here, it uh, generates more outflow and supplies this jet stream with additional resistance to this trough progressing eastward, and this jet would be strong over South Florida and keep this from moving eastward towards the coastline. But if there's less convective activity down here, than the GFS shows, this jet would be weaker, and this trough may have more of an opportunity to move towards the coastline. But that's something we may um, ha have to watch for. It's still unclear uh, exactly what the positioning of the upper trough will be. The UK Met and the Canadian uh, may be seeing this, that it's able to progress farther eastward. It gets interesting when we start looking at the Canadian ensemble mean here. This is a, at 500 millibars day four, actually sorry, day five. You can see the ridge up here and then the cutoff up below showing up down here. And all these red letters indicate the different ensemble member positions of the center of low pressure of 500 millibars. And you can see that some of them show it inland like the European and the GFS, but we have a good cluster out over the water or the coastline, which would allow it to stack up with the surface low and uh, let it develop subtropical characteristics. And you can see easily how this could get interesting if uh, these are more correct out here over the water. And you can see at the surface that the ensemble mean is, is seeing at least an area of low pressure developing here, not particularly strong, but you can see the cluster of surface lows uh, showing up on the spaghetti plot here and uh, right off the coast if it can get stacked up with the upper low could become hybrid in nature and that's something we're going to have to watch you can see on the ensemble not the ensemble me but the operational run here uh, that the upper low is closer to the coast here and uh, the surface low underneath of it is trying to get drawn uh, drawn into a stacked position and is stronger here. You can see the area of precipitation cut off from the front out here, indicating that it is at least partially warm core. And then it moves it inland and it weakens as it comes inland, which also implies that it is partially warm core, since it would weaken over land after it loses the, the support of the warm water underneath of it. Uh, and this this will at least be a wet kind of a situation for the Carolinas here and possibly down towards Florida and the Bahamas as well. Probably not too significant of a system, but it could be something interesting uh, that we will have to watch to develop here and get drawn inland as it uh, gets drawn towards this upper low that will be stalling out. Classic trough split setup that we have early in the season. And you can see all the rain that's showing up on the Canadian here too, down towards the Bahamas, Florida, and into the Northwestern Caribbean as that area starts to fire up after the weekend into next week that we may have to start watching uh, as we get all this moisture streaming northward from the Pacific interacting with this old frontal boundary and we could get festering low pressure down here that we'll have to watch. And this is a classic early season uh, setup where you get a one-two punch kind of a thing where you have something that tries to develop north of the subtropical jet stream under a cold core low and then you have something else that tries to develop later of more true tropical origin to the south of the jet stream perhaps in the western Caribbean and we don't always get development from either of them but they are at least interesting features that we have to watch here. Certainly uh, high potential by May standards for something interesting to go on and you can see in general how this area is starting to light up as the MJO interacts with this pattern that we've been talking about of cutoff upper lows interacting with surface boundaries that get stuck down here and all this messiness that could result in some mischief occurring this weekend and into next week. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.